Every state in America has its own rich and storied culinary tradition, but what's the one thing you've got to try in each? From Alabama's Lane Cakes to the so-called oysters of Wyoming, these are the famous foods you need to try in every state. The Lane Cake is a classic Alabama food. Its story began when Alabama's Emma Rylander Lane entered her cake into a Georgia County Fair and went home with first place. Her cake was so good that it took on her name, and when Harper Lee mentioned it in her timeless novel, To Kill a Mockingbird, the Lane Cake's place in history was secured. This delicious dessert is packed with peach schnapps, coconut, pecans, and more peaches. How could you go wrong? Heading to Alaska anytime soon? Don't forget to check out the state's most iconic food, king crab. These amazing creatures can grow up to 24 pounds, and they're delicious too, so it's no wonder that this delicacy is famous all around the world. And any seafood lover will tell you that. If you want the real deal, you've got to go right to the source. Invented in Tucson, the deep-fried burrito known as the chimichanga is the perfect marriage of Mexican flavor and American ingenuity. There are a ton of stories floating around about exactly who first decided to throw a burrito in the fryer, but whoever it was, they were clearly nothing less than a genius. Every year, the town of Atkins, Arkansas holds Pickle Fest, and every year, they sell thousands of orders of Fat Man's original fried dill pickles. This famous food festival was the brainchild of Burnell Fat Man Austin, who perfected his recipe in 1963. You'll see fried pickles on menus across the country today, and it's Mr. Austin you've got to thank for that. If you're ever passing through Arkansas, you could do worse than pick up some of his originals, which are still made using his top secret recipe. Yes, it's true. Fortune cookies, a famous staple of American Chinese cuisine, don't hail from Asia at all. The recipe as we know it today actually comes from California, and it was concocted much more recently than you might think, too. There's still a ton of disagreement on just who developed these tasty little cookies, but what we do know is that they spread across the country from the Golden State itself. Who'd have thunk it? Want to torpedo a dinner conversation in Colorado? Suggests that the state's famous chilies might be inferior to New Mexico's. Come on, man. Bring your mom. They're trying to take who we are. We don't want to lose that. We'll throw down some chilies, see what happens, yeah. <laughs> The rivalry is very real and very serious, so naturally, Colorado takes its green chilies very seriously indeed. The chili is a pepper, with just the right amount of heat and all of the flavor you could possibly want along with it. Nobody wants to stoke interstate tensions here, but let's be honest, the famous Colorado green chili is the best of the best. When it comes to famous food feuds, look no further than the fight between Connecticut and Maine over who has the better lobster roll. One thing the former has going for it is the fact that the lobster roll was actually invented in Connecticut. This version is hot and buttery, which any lobster lover will admit sounds pretty darn good, even though the colder Maine variant appears to have edged ahead in popularity. Should it have? According to science, maybe not, since flavors tend to pop more when food is warmed up, meaning Connecticut's version really is packed with more flavor. Scrapple goes back to a time when people used every scrap of food. When it came time to use the last of the meat of a pig, those bits were ground up, mixed with cornmeal and spices, and turned into a breakfast dish. Think of it as sausage filling in patty form. Delaware may not be credited with inventing Scrapple, since that honor goes to Pennsylvania, but the state's chefs have gone above and beyond in incorporating this old food into new, more exciting recipes. So congratulations, Delaware, Scrapple is yours. Everyone knows that there are oranges, and then there are Florida oranges. Florida's hot, damp climate is perfect for producing slightly tart, super juicy oranges. Although there's more going on in Florida than just this nationwide favorite. Oranges, lemons, grapefruit. Florida has it all and more. Even better, Southern Florida is actually situated in the Caribbean basin, meaning the state doesn't just have citrus, but tropical fruit too. They don't call it the Sunshine State for nothing. Of course, Georgia's famous food is the peach. After all, the state's name is almost synonymous with the fruit. 
peaches, which are native to Asia, weren't successfully farmed in the U.S. at all until 1856, when a pair of Belgian horticulturists named Louis and Prosper Berkmans became determined to introduce it as an environmentally friendly alternative to cotton. With the end of the Civil War, peaches became the new flagship crop of the South and, buoyed by Georgia's perfect climate, a new and lucrative trade was born. In 2016, Vice reported that Hawaii goes through about 7 million cans of Spam every year, and considering there were just less than a million and a half people in the state at the time, that's, well, it's a whole lot of Spam. Hawaii's obsession with this weird little delicacy began during the hard times of World War II, as it was much easier to get a hold of than fresh meat. And it's not just eaten out of the can, either. This famous food has been incorporated into countless other dishes across the Hawaiian Islands. The word Idaho is practically synonymous with potatoes. It's estimated that 97% of Americans eat potatoes regularly, and this state produces the vast majority of them, growing around 13 billion pounds each year. The state's climate is ideal for this staple vegetable. With warm days and cool nights throughout the growing season, the summer snow melts for watering, and the rich volcanic soil for growing. It's a potato lover's dream come true. In 1943, Ike Sewell and Rick Ricardo decided they were going to create their own kind of American pizza. The result was a pie with a deep dish, thin crust, and inverted toppings. And Chicago's pizza lovers never looked back. Today, Chicago's deep dish pizzas are famed around the world, and along with New York's own style, are arguably one of the two most well-known styles to have come out of America. It's not very Italian, of course, but it's still a heck of a twist on a much-loved classic. Although, not not everyone will agree with that point. It's a f casserole. There's sugar, there's cream, it's a pie. What more do you need to know? Well, maybe this. The sugar cream pie is Indiana's official state pie, also known as a desperation pie. It was created using standard ingredients found in most kitchens. The sugar cream pie has been around since the 1800s and was a dessert that could also be made at times of the year when the apples and other fruits were gone. Useful, no. Iowa is the home of Vanda Rose Farms Applewood Smoked Artisan Dry Cured Bacon. Aside from being something of a mouthful to say, this famous food is a little different than your ordinary bacon. Every slab is rubbed with brown sugar and spices, then smoked over applewood, and it's cured for about two weeks. It's an old-fashioned curing process used on meat from vegetarian pigs, and you can truly taste the difference in the final product. Birox are essentially bready rolls filled with meat, onion, and cabbage. Today, this famous food is served at diners across the state of Kansas, but their history goes back much further than that. Birox actually originated in Eastern Europe, made by wives who would bake their husbands' portable meals to take with them when they headed into the fields. When German-Russian Mennonites settled in Kansas, they brought their Birox with them, and they remain an important link to the area's heritage to this day. The hot brown was invented in 1926 at the Brown Hotel. It's essentially an open-faced sandwich made with Texas toast, bacon, turkey, tomato, and a bechamel sauce with cheese, properly called Mornay sauce. Part of the allure is the fact that the hot brown is the ultimate hangover food, and given that Kentucky is also the home of bourbon, it's probably fair to say there are plenty of those going around too. There are few famous foods that have inspired more tales than Louisiana's po' boy. Even today, there's no consensus on how they were invented, but once they hit the scene in New Orleans, they helped define Louisiana's culinary tradition. The name po' boy first showed up in print in 1929 in conjunction with a murder case that was being tried at the time, as the trial paused for a lunch of po' boy sandwiches. Nowadays, these sandwiches, usually made with seafood, are a must-try for locals and visitors alike. Yep, it's the lobster roll again. While this dish may have been invented in Connecticut, it's the main version that's the most popular. The main lobster roll is served cold, topped with lemon and mayo, which perfectly complements the taste of the lobster itself, which, if you're lucky, will have been piled into the roll by the bucketful. It's no wonder that this is the version that spreads so easily across the rest of the country and beyond. 
Maryland is known for its seafood, and its blue crab in particular, but no famous seafood platter is complete without a little Old Bay. This Maryland staple is spread nationwide, but it's still treasured in the state that first created it. And it's not as old as you might expect, either. It was made when a man named Gustav Brunn fled Nazi Germany and brought his spice mixer with him, settling in his new country and accidentally creating a seasoning mix that would later become a state treasure. When it comes to beloved famous foods with a long history, look no further than Massachusetts. The state has been serving Boston-style clam chowder for a long time, and they've been doing it out of the country's oldest continuously operating restaurant. This New England favorite even got a shout-out by Herman Melville in Moby Dick. But no one sums up clam chowder better than author and playwright Joseph C. Lincoln, who said, It is Yankee Doodle in a kettle. While there might technically be no right answer to the question, how do you like your hot dogs, Michigan natives will probably disagree. In that state, it's not only a Coney dog all the way, but there's even the ongoing and famous rivalry between Lafayette Coney Island and American Coney Island over who does it best. There must be something good about this, because it's 11.30 in the morning, mm -hmm. and I'm eating this like it's the last food on Earth. This Michigan famous food features a beef dog on a steamed bun, covered in an all-meat chili, yellow mustard, and white onions. Simple, straightforward, classic. Minnesota is known for its long, cold winters, so it's not surprising that one of its most famous foods is one that's perfect on a dark and chilly night. This is the hot dish. And while there's a ton of variations on it, a few things stay the same. It's always a vegetable, a protein, and a starch, all tied together by a creamy sauce. It likely has roots in the Great Depression, in times of scarcity, but that doesn't mean it's not delicious, especially in the winter months. Just try to imagine Southern food without thinking of those soft, pillowy, buttery biscuits. Of all the Southern states, it's Mississippi that takes biscuits the most seriously. Natchez is known as the biscuit capital of the world, and the city even holds an annual biscuit festival, complete with bake-offs and biscuit-making demonstrations. The nation thanks you, Mississippi. Visit KC calls barbecue Kansas City's culinary soulmate, and based on the sheer number of Missouri restaurants serving up the legendary Kansas City-style barbecue, that appears to be true. And they're not talking about just any barbecue either. They're talking about meat seasoned with a dry rub, cooked low and slow, then doused with a sweet sauce. Still in doubt, the state also lays claim to the greatest concentration of barbecue restaurants in the nation, which means there's no shortage of great food to choose from. Huckleberries grow wild throughout the Rocky Mountains, but it's in Montana that huckleberries are considered a truly famous food. These neat little berries have a long history, going all the way back to Lewis and Clark and the earliest interactions between white settlers and indigenous peoples. And while you can substitute them for any recipe that calls for blueberries, huckleberry pie is tops when it comes to Montana's desserts. Runza is the cousin of Kansas Beer Rock. These handheld meat pies originated in Eastern Europe and were brought to the U.S. by immigrants who settled in the area. But while beer rocks are prepared in a more traditional manner, Nebraska has switched it up a bit. Here, they're usually rectangular instead of rounded, and you're more likely to find a wider assortment of fillings, too. Nevada is a true melting pot, with people from all over the country drawn to the hot, sunny climate and the chaos of Las Vegas. You'll also find food galore here, but when it comes to a true Nevada classic, you need look no further than the shrimp cocktail. This nifty appetizer made its Vegas debut in 1959 at the Golden Gate Casino, and until 1991, you could get one for just 50 cents. While Boston lays claim to inventing the dish, it's Vegas that's made it famous. And it remains a casino staple to this day. According to New Hampshire NPR, the state's signature dish is more of a signature attitude, and that's making something unique out of something they have a lot of. So what do they have a lot of? Apples. In fact, New Hampshire produces more than 24 million pounds of apples every year, and many of those go into making the apple cider for apple cider donuts. This fantastic dessert is simple, usually served plain or covered in sugar. But who needs frosting when you've got a tasty apple kick? Whether you call it pork roll or Taylor ham, this is one of the most famous New Jersey staples. What do you call it? Taylor ham. It's the oh best. Oh my god. You mean pork roll? Oh god. 
This is a processed pork product that is rumored to go back to the Civil War. The recipe was made official in 1856, and while it was first called Taylor's Prepared Ham, it didn't actually meet guidelines for being called ham. That never stopped anyone from enjoying anything delicious, though, and since then, this classic New Jersey sandwich can be found in pretty much any of the state's delis. The earliest enchiladas may have been made hundreds of years ago in Mexico, but when areas like New Mexico were enveloped into the U.S., they became a part of America's cuisine, too. Today, enchiladas are still a beloved dish across New Mexico. In fact, the state has so many amazing enchilada places that there's actually an enchilada trail, a series of restaurants serving up some of the best in the country, and by extension, the world. New York City is known for a lot of things, but for the state's very best food, you'll need to go all the way to the other side of the state. And that's where Buffalo is, the home of a nationwide favorite, a staple at football games, and a simple food that has nonetheless spawned entire chains of restaurants. That food, of course, is the buffalo wing. Known simply as wings in Buffalo itself, they're served up with varying degrees of spiciness. But whether you like them hot, medium, or mild, one thing is for sure, they're pretty darn delicious. North Carolina barbecue is in a category all its own, and the state's pulled pork is some of the best in the world. Pulled pork has a long history that goes all the way back to at least 1769, when George Washington mentioned enjoying a barbecue in his diary. Today, pork is the barbecue meat of choice, thanks to North Carolina's early Scottish, German, and Irish settlers. It's also often served with coleslaw too, which provides a nice, fresh contrast to the intense flavors of the pork. If you've never been to North Dakota, you might be wondering what the heck Nefla is. But the answer is simple. It's a famous hearty soup made with chicken stock, dumplings, potatoes, celery, and carrots. German in origin, Nefla was brought to North Dakota by settlers in the 1800s. It's a filling, comforting kind of soup that's perfect for those long, cold winter nights. And any other time, too. One of the most famous foods in Ohio is Cincinnati chili, a truly bizarre mix of ingredients that really shouldn't work together. It's basically a base of spaghetti with layers of chili, onions, beans, and enough cheese to cover the entire thing, and then some. There are few dishes out there quite so polarizing as this one, but one thing that's undeniable is that you have to try it to really believe it. Where on earth would American food be without chicken fried steak? Even though it originated in Texas, brought over by German and Austrian immigrants inspired by the Wiener schnitzels of their homelands, it's Oklahoma who can lay claim to some of the best known chicken steak recipes. The state takes it super seriously, too. In 1988, they even named this fried meat and gravy dish as their official state meal. Marion berries are strictly Oregon-born and bred, and that's no joke either. The berry was created by the Oregon State University in the early 1900s as a crossbreed between a few different kinds of blackberries. The berry is widely lauded for its sweet and tart flavor, and even though Oregon produces around 30 million pounds each and every year, most of them don't make it out of the state. Oregonians claim they don't ship well, but nobody could blame them if they were eating them all themselves. Hot beef, melted cheese, a roll to keep it together? Yes, the cheesesteak is that simple and that good. And Pennsylvania has been its home ever since it was invented by a hot dog vendor in the 1930s. Apparently, the world can thank Pat Oliveri for coming up with this magical creation. And here's some extra good news for onion lovers and haters. Whether you like it with or without, either way is oh so right. Coffee milk is a distinctly Rhode Island creation, and it's exactly what it sounds like, too. Milk flavored with a coffee syrup. You'll find lots of brands throughout the state, all slightly different, but they all make your milk taste just like a cold coffee drink. It's not just a grown-up thing, either. Instead of growing up with Nesquik, it's coffee milk all the way for Rhode Island kids. Boiled peanuts seem like a weird food at first glance, but they've been around since before the Civil War. They quickly became popular after South Carolina newspapers started advertising them as the snack of anyone who was someone in Southern society. That was around the start of the 20th century, and since then, they've become a snacking staple across the South. It just comes right open. Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Right. Okay. This could grow on you. 
The state bread of South Dakota is fry bread, and while it's certainly a delicious and versatile food, it's also incredibly controversial. That's because fry bread played a part in a very dark chapter in American history. When Native Americans were forced onto reservations in the late 19th century, they were given rations that included salt, lard, powdered milk, and flour. That was used to make fry bread, which today acts as a reminder of the atrocities committed against indigenous Americans. South Dakota embraced it officially as a way to share cultural touchstones, but it's still a hotly debated topic to this day. American barbecue evolved into separate styles from its Caribbean roots, and one of those styles is the Memphis version, which features a sweet, tomato-based sauce that developed in part because of the readily available ingredients that were traded along the Mississippi River. Memphis ribs are also known for their dry spice rub. Memphis is also where barbecue diverged from being strictly pork-related and began using other meat products as well, making for a style that's as uniquely Tennessean as Sun Studio itself. Who doesn't love queso? This is one of those appetizers that you could easily make a whole meal out of, if only they'd just keep it coming. And no state takes its queso more seriously than Texas, where they boast of first mixing it up. As soon as processed American cheese was invented in the early 20th century, it was used for this ooey gooey dish of goodness that the brands Velveeta and Rotel later turned into an art form. Honorable mention, of course, has to go to the state's barbecue tradition, which is famous famous around the world for very good reason. Utah is home to more than 2 million Mormons, and it's their love of jello that pushes this wiggly jiggly dessert to the top of Utah's favorites list. In fact, people eat more jello here than anywhere else in the country. This all has to do with the marketing campaigns of the 1980s. Jello was pitched as a family friendly dessert that just happened to be perfect for large gatherings, like church functions, for example. And the rest, as they say, is history. Vermont produces around 2 million gallons of maple syrup goodness every year, making the state the spiritual home of this iconic food. Seeing the sap flow out of the tree, yeah. the taste of fresh maple syrup. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. And they've been doing it a long time too, since early settlers were taught the art of maple sugaring from the Native Americans, who had been doing it for countless generations before that. What makes Virginia ham so good that it takes the name of the state? Well, to be real Virginia ham, the meat has to come from a pig that's only eaten foods it can forage, as well as peanuts. It's then cured, spiced, hung, and smoked, and allowed to grow a layer of mold. This ham is so iconic, partly because they've been doing it for a long time, since the colonial era, when Smithfield, Virginia was at the center of an industry that fed the new colonies. Salmon is arguably the ultimate wild food in North America. And if you want to get the freshest fish possible, you've got to go to Washington State. They take their salmon very seriously indeed. And serious salmon fans won't find better than the fish at Seattle's Pike Place Market. Coho, King, Sockeye, Pink, or Kita. Destined for smoking or sushi, Seattle has you covered. The pepperoni roll is essentially pepperoni wrapped in rolled dough and baked so the bread absorbs all that pepperoni deliciousness. But it's also so much more. It all goes back to the state's coal mining past and an Italian immigrant, Giuseppe Arghiro. When Arghiro saw coal miners heading off to work with a lunch of bread and a stick of salami or pepperoni, he decided he could combine the two into a handy portable pocket. It was an immediate hit with miners and soon became a favorite across the rest of the state. Wisconsin is famous for its cheese, and it's no wonder. The state is home to more than a million cows. A staggering 90% of the state's milk is turned into cheese, and along the way, much of that milk becomes cheese curds. Separating the curds and whey is a critical part of cheesemaking, and the curds themselves are delicious, both deep-fried and as they are. No, Rocky Mountain oysters aren't oysters. They're actually battered and deep-fried bull testicles, which have long been a tried-if-you-dare part of Wyoming's food scene. Reported to be aphrodisiacs, this dish even has its own festivals, like the Testicle Festival in Evanston, Wyoming. They're surrounded by some fascinating cowboy lore, too, with some stories telling of ranch hands who served them newly harvested at huge parties. And maybe that explains their popularity. After all, who doesn't want to be a cowboy? Check out one of our newest videos right here, plus even more mashed videos about your favorite foods are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.